this. Okay. Uh, hopefully, it's sharing my screen. No way of knowing, really. Um, well, actually, if it's not sharing my screen, because for some reason it doesn't feel like it is, but um, then let me know. Pardon? Oh, I think it is working. Yeah. Yeah, it was just in the recording. It says I'm sharing my screen, but for, I just feel like it looks different. But anyways, I think it's okay. Um, make sure I'm not on mute because that would be a good way to start the week, wouldn't it? All right. Happy Monday. You made it. Uh, let's see here. So chapter one, um, I don't know if you've had a chance to, to skim it. Uh, if not, we're just going to talk about chapter one today. I was tempted to just jump into chapter two, but we'll kind of have a, a freebie day, chapter one, just kind of introducing things. And um, uh, I feel like I really set myself up for failure by having kind of a fun class with the dashboards. And now I, um, I don't know if I can keep that up. I'm trying to, I know. I know. So all weekend, I've been racking my brain. What's a, what's a fun thing that we can do? And the, the funnest thing that I can come up with is um, what is analytics? When I say analytics, what does that, what does that mean? Yeah, this, this is the best I could come up with for chapter one. <laughs> so analytics, oops. Now, it can be kind of in terms of your field specifically, right? And uh, so what was your, you had an answer. Oh, to analyze something to observe something. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm trying to avoid the word analyze just because it's so, part of the word, right? But uh, so observe information. Nice. What else? It sounds easy, right? I ask, oh, what's analytics? Oh, everyone just kind of has an idea of what it is, right? But if you have to really pinpoint it, and it's very broad, right? And so when you have to think about what it is, then that can be kind of jarring, right? And so, uh, Sure, we observe information. Yeah, so like, I'm going to put words in your mouth and say, make predictions. Oh, uh, yeah, that something happened right. in the past, so, and now we are preparing for the future. Yeah, so use past data to uh, predict future values, right? Or uh, to predict, uh, I'll call it future data. Oops. I'm gonna highlight predict because that's gonna be that's gonna be a big one. But what what was your Calculated risk, like when you stock market and mm -hmm. we analyze the past data and then like take calculated risks for future, right? Yeah. So we can use it to calculate risk. Right. Whether that be from uh, an insurance side or uh, a medical side, right? There are lots of different risks that we want to manage, right? And so, uh, Usually we talk about insurance, but also medical risks, right? That's really big. That's a huge field. Um, even investment risk. So, yeah. 
So lots of different risks that we would want to uh, calculate, but also manage potentially. Uh, nice. How about in, uh, in the water world? Can use predictions, right? What would you do? You would use uh, current information, right? To make predictions about where things are going. Right? You'd have probably some sort of uh, timeline. And so um, I guess, I guess I stole the first or the second one, uh, right? But it can apply to, to lots of different scenarios, right? So we use past data to predict uh, future data, right? We can take it as far as, okay, so you've made a prediction, right? Regardless of how you got there, I predict that uh, the, I don't know, water levels are going to decrease. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, that's my prediction, right? Based off of all these other factors, right? I make a prediction and then I walk away. No, I have to be able to make a suggestion, right? And say, okay, this is how I'm gonna use this information, right? Mm -hmm. And so from the prediction, whoops. make a decision that's kind of the, the next step is to be able to use that prediction to make a decision now there are you know lots of different ways that we can do that but ultimately that's our our goal is to be able to communicate some decision uh, Usually it's not good enough to just say, hey, here's some information, right? They wanna know, okay, well, what am I supposed to do with that? I feel like you were trying to say something. It's <laughs> fair. Okay, and so here, any? Mm, nice. I'll even do it in a different color and justify the decision. Nice. Observe a pattern. Awesome. Observe a pattern. Nice. <clears throat> So from here, right, we've kind of developed uh, the, the three stages of analytics, right? If we had to kind of organize these, right? We start with just observing, right? We observe information, we observe a pattern, we observe a relationship, we observe something, we're just kind of hear some stuff, right? Uh, and then we move into, okay, well, what if I want to predict things, right? And so then we take it one step further and we say, okay, I can predict things. And then ultimately what we're working towards is uh, what they call prescriptive uh, analytics, which is where we prescribe some sort of uh, decision or some sort of um, justification for the decision, right? And so that's like the last step in our analytics process, but, oh gosh, really hit my knee there. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna highlight observe just to, to show the, the three layers. Okay. And I've got them here that I wanted to, so remember last day I kind of, I said, oh, we've got two different options and now I'm choosing neither of them. I'll be jumping back and forth into this, uh, the chapter one summary. Oops, where did I? 
Uh, I'll show you where it is. Um, the chapter one summary notes, but I want to write around them. Yeah. And so kind of skipping some stuff and I don't know, things change. Here's those beautiful slides, but they say the same thing. So they're there. And I also posted our that video that I tried to show you unsuccessfully, sort of. Um, oh. These are it because it's not very organized. Um, good job. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Uh, so hopefully that Friday activity was okay. Um, there was one question I hadn't finished yet, so I just cut it for you guys. So I'll put it on next week. Pardon? That's okay. You've got until when? Yeah. You're good. Give me lots of time. Thanks. Not a worry. Not a worry. I, uh, but I did see that some people had done it. Good job. Now it's done. First assignment done. Okay. But what I wanted to say was that I'll be kind of going back and forth into those summary notes, decided to talk for those instead of the slides, uh, but we'll build around them a little bit. Okay. So what we arrived at on our own, on our very own, are the three fields or kind of three level. I'll unmute myself. How about that? Um, sorry, folks. Uh, I'm back. It decided to update. So that's nice. And I guess it's still recording. So that's weird. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. So this textbook talks about business analytics. Obviously it applies to any analytics, but <laughs> business analytics is the money maker, right? Mostly because it has to do with money uh, and it can be applied into any field, right? And the techniques that we learn here um, are the same, right? Doesn't matter what the data is. We, we use the same techniques. And so maybe I should have uh, this one here, copy. I'll just bump it in. Bump it in. And of course, I post these notes after class, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Business analytics or analytics in general, right, uh, is just anything from simple reports, right? Uh, and then we can move through just like we did when we kind of talked about, okay, what are all the different things that we could do? And we kind of move towards uh, kind of more advanced things like decision-making and um, just making big decisions in general. Okay. But uh, we've got descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and then prescriptive analytics 
And descriptive analytics is, I'm going to link it to the kind of observe note that we made, All right? So we, we just kind of observe information. We have information. We summarize it, right? And so, um, so describes what's happened in the past, right? And so we can make data queries, can do simple reports. Many dashboards are, are just uh, observational, right? And so we would lump those as descriptive analytics. And so um, we looked at dashboards last day where we just observe information and we summarize it. Uh, observe and summarize. Otherwise, it would just be in, stuck in the spreadsheet. Of course, my notability didn't update as well. And it's got me kind of thrown off. Because um, it looks all different from last term. So then we moved on to predictions, right? Predictive analytics is kind of the next step. Uh, and where we construct models. Okay? And so models or modeling is going to be really common, right, for us, where we want to model some, uh, some variable, right, so some outcome or some measurement. Okay, so here, we, we model um, an outcome or a measurement, oops, measure, can't spell, measurement to make predictions. Very quickly after that, of course, we move into, okay, what do I do with that prediction, right? It's very rare that you're just gonna make a prediction and then leave it, right? Um, unless you're like me and you're a consultant and it's not my job to make uh, suggestions or to, to tell you what to do with this information. Right, then I back off and I say, I don't know, I just, I predict that uh, the probability of this happening is 68% and then do with that what you will, right? But most of the time we're gonna take it that next step and say, okay, because the probability of this happening is 68%, I recommend that we do this, right? And then justify it, like I said. So then the next level, and the last level is the prescriptive statistics. Oh, sure. <clears throat> so here, I'll just highlight that because it was kind of set up in a weird way, but... Um, can I give myself some room here? No, nah. it's okay. I'm a slave to these page breaks because I wanted to look good once we, once I post it as a PDF, but like I said, I'm a total slave to them. In terms of, and I'll just bring in this real quick here. In terms of the topics that we're gonna cover, what we'll find is, okay, we said we were gonna go to, well, I'd love to get into chapter nine, but it's probably most important that we do seven and eight. That's a fact I'm just telling you. Uh, and so here, it's not until, so hopefully we'll get to chapter nine. 
That's my goal, right, for this course. There's, there's lots more advanced things that we could do, right? But we only have so much time. And so for us, right, of course, they, they give themselves a freebie because they talk about predictive and prescriptive statistics or analytics in chapter one. I don't think it counts, really. Uh, I would say it's none of these uh, because we're just introducing ideas. But for the first many chapters, first six chapters, right? we're only talking about descriptive statistics. And that might feel like, ah, oh, well, that seems to be the most basic thing and that's boring and uh, shouldn't we be learning more? Well, what you'll find is that most analytics is descriptive statistics. Most of the time, we're just producing descriptive statistics. Obviously, uh, kind of the predictive and the prescriptive statistics or analytics, I should say, I say statistics because old school, I guess. Um, right, but uh, predictive, we'll kind of uh, sneak into the prescriptive, right? Fine, you've made this prediction, what are you gonna do with it, right? That kind of thing. Um, or at least to think about it, right? But uh, so we will get into the predictive. All those P's, I get them mixed up, but um, all right. And then you'll be able to extend it to the prescriptive. But most of the time, if you just let yourself think about it, the decisions are, are relatively obvious, right? If I say the probability of something bad happening uh, is 68%, right? Unless you shut down your plant, well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna shut down your plant because the probability is higher than 50%, right? It's usually the guideline that we use, right? And so that kind of thing. So we're gonna focus on uh, descriptive statistics, of course, at least for the, the beginning part of the course. Um, I'm going to go through chapter four as quickly or potentially skipping it uh, as we can because it's boring and it, well, I don't like it. Um, so here, uh, most analytics I shouldn't say most. I'll say most common analytics are descriptive. And that's fine, right? Thinking about those dashboards that we looked at last day, there were no predictions, right? There were no, oh, well, this happened, so this, you're going to do this right? There were no prescriptions. They were all descriptive, right? And there was a lot of information there. I mean, we don't know the background data or anything, but that's okay, right? So the dashboards from last day, whoops. were all descriptive. So that's kind of cool. We can do a lot of things with just descriptive statistics. Uh, even things like inference is considered descriptive. Now, inference, statistical inference is, okay, fine, I'm biased, but it's very important. Okay, let's talk about what statistical inference is. Statistical inference is, well, it's so close to predictive, okay, but we're still observing information, 
And then from those, so if we want to, if we want to prove a statement, right? If you want to prove that product A is significantly better than product B by some measurement, right? Regardless of what that is, then you need inference to be able to do that. You need to attach a probability to that statement, right? So if we want to say that use the term significant, right? It means statistically significant. So if we want to use the term significant, right, we must use statistics. Statistics slash inference. So what's inference then? Inference is when you take sample information to infer something about the population, right? You take a little mini version and then you say, okay, well, I'm assuming that this mini version is representative of the population, which I'm trying to learn about, right? And then I can say, okay, well, what happened in this mini version? I can apply it to the population and I'm this confident in my statement. And so inference is when we use sample information to infer, and I use that term because then it links it to the term inference, to infer or to learn about the general population. I have a, a go-to example that I'll bring up again in that section, but uh, I do have a water measurement uh, example. So let's just say that, okay, I've, I've drawn measurements from 15 points in a, in a stream, right? And so I, I have some measurements now. I don't know, I think it's dissolved oxygen levels. I have to go back there in my, in my old slides. But uh, so I've got dissolved oxygen levels at 15 points in a stream, right? I can, with 100% certainty, summarize what the dissolved oxygen level is at those 15 points in the stream, but that's only going to take me so far. What do I want to do? I want to generalize about the entire stream, right? And so I, I've randomly picked points in the stream, and I'm using that sample information, right? But then I want to extend it to the general stream, right? And so what we do, right, is, and I'm trying to think if there was something I wanted to write down there, but uh, I'll just go for it. Uh, and so what do we do? We have 15 data points, right? And those 15 data points have an average, right? An average dissolved oxygen level. I know, or intuitively, we all understand that, well, what if I just threw those data points out and I took 15 completely different data points, right? Still randomly selected in the stream, right? Still presumably representative of the stream, right? I was gonna draw the stream, but I don't think I need to do that, right? But each sample of 15 points is gonna have a slightly different average, right? And so, and we're okay with that kind of intuitively. We know that if I go to a vending machine and I get a bag of Doritos, which I do often, I know that, okay, there's an advertised weight on the bag, right? But I also know that the bag isn't going to weigh exactly that much every time. There's variability, right? And so that's what we're getting at with the different measurements. So going back to the dissolved oxygen, right? I understand that every 15 group of 15 points that I take are going to have a slightly different 
average. So I don't want to use that average that I have, right? Because I understand that, well, I just took a random sample. I could take a different random sample, right? And so what statistics does for us is it establishes kind of a, a plausible distribution of these averages, right? And then we can use that to draw in, uh, conclusions about the general population, right? And so, okay, based off of this average and the amount of wiggle room, let's call it, right? maybe you've seen standard deviations and measures of variance, but uh, think of it as wiggle room, right? And so then I know the amount of wiggle room that I have. And from there, I can conclude that the mean dissolved oxygen level is significantly, uh oh, right? That's inference is significantly less than five or greater than five, I think is the value I have in the example, right? Which seems to be kind of a baseline, right? And then I probably wouldn't back off there. I would say, so you need to do something about the stream or, or whatever, right? But uh, we understand, here, I'm, I'm forcing you to say it. It's like uh, when teachers are teaching something really complicated and they're like, well, obviously, it's usually not obvious. It's like, but I, I don't, I didn't think it was obvious. Uh, but here I'm forcing you to say, okay, we understand that each sample, that each randomly selected sample will yield slightly different averages, for example, right? Often we talk about averages and we're interested about uh, we're interested in learning about averages. Uh, let's see here. A randomly selected sample will yield slightly different averages. And statistical inference allows us to incorporate that variability, right? Allows us to incorporate that variability. So, that's relatively kind of a, a big deal to be able to do, right? To be able to draw conclusions and say things like, uh, we might be able to say the dissolved oxygen or the average, I'll say, we'll be able to draw conclusions like the dissolve, the average dissolved oxygen level, two S's? So uh, the average dissolved oxygen level in the stream, oops, or whatever, is significantly less than five units. I don't know. I know. Everyone else will kill me, but I don't really care about units. Less than five. Micro something, probably. Units. Sold. That's not my job to care about the units. Five something. Something reasonable. I know. We joke about it all the time. Like, who cares about units? I'm guessing uh, Aaron would have something to say about it too. <laughs> Probably Allison as well. Uh, everyone, that's okay. 
Um, right? So relatively kind of advanced things, but remember, it's still being classified as descriptive, right? We're still just taking information, or I shouldn't say just, we're still taking information and we're just observing, just again. Uh, and we're observing, right? And from those averages, right, we're uh, inferring about what's going on, but it's still considered descriptive statistics. So we can do very advanced things in this descriptive realm. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. <laughs> I kind of feel like talking about, I know I talked about it on the first day, but maybe let's write down something about linear regression. Have you guys done regression in your other courses? You'd probably remember the term. So if it doesn't sound familiar, then that's totally fine. Let's talk about linear regression, which is the, the first step into predictive analytics. Okay. And so linear regression is when we have, usually we start with a numerical outcome, so some measurement, and we want to use other variables, so uh, other measurements to predict a future outcome, right? If the, the factor A is this, and factor B is this, and factor C is this, then what do I predict the outcome to be? And so here, linear regression is, uh, well, at its very core, a line of best fit used to predict unknown values. Looks the very basic example would be if you have some X and some Y variables, right? X and Y, and maybe you have some sort of relationship that looks like this. Right? What does regression do or what does Excel do? Well, we can ask it to fit a line of best fit and it does some stuff in the background. Uh, and in this course, we're not gonna talk so much about uh, what it does in the background. I'll give you those formulas because they're relatively simple. Um, but in general, right, we just need to be able to, to do it. Okay. And so what it does is it fits some, some line of best fit, maybe like this. And then we have a y equals mx plus b situation, right? a linear equation, right? some slope and some intercept, right? where in this kind of review from math 128, but I know it's been a while, right? And so where m is the slope and B is the y-intercept, right? But this is the equation of a line. So for example, say Excel tells us that Y is four X plus three. I've got a slope of four and a y-intercept of three. What can I do? Well, I have these observed observations, observed observations. I have these observed points, right? These observed data points that I, I can talk about exactly how they behaved, but that's not what I'm interested in, right? What I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to put in any value of x, right? To predict what value of, what the value of y would be. 
right? And that's why it is a line of best fit. And so here, because I think of it as on average, right? That's the outcome that I would predict. Right? We understand that there's, again, variability around this line, right? And there could be a lot of variability or very low variability. Right? So we'll have measures for that. But, right, we want to predict unknown values. And so we can use... Oops, we can use y equals 4x plus 3 to predict the value of y when x is some given value, right? You can plug in x equals 2. What's your prediction? Four times two is eight plus three is 11. Now I don't do mental math. So that was really impressive for me. And I refuse. I think it's my right. I have a math degree. I, I don't need to do math anymore. In fact, they kind of uh, break you. Well, they break you period. No, uh, <laughs> but uh, towards the end of my undergrad, because my undergrad's in math and then my, my master's is in stats. And so um, towards the end of my undergrad, I was doing things like one plus one in my calculator just to make sure, just, just to be sure. And so, so they really break you out of that, um, which is funny because when I told people, oh, I'm, I'm doing a math degree. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Can you do like 472 divided by three? I'm like, what? No, I can't. I don't want to. I don't care. Um, and so you'll learn that relatively quickly. I don't do mental math and that's okay. That's all right. I've survived. Um, but sometimes it's embarrassing. I should probably know. All right. Uh, let's see here. So this is the, the very basic form of linear regression. We could start to incorporate what? We could incorporate more than one value of x. Makes it hard to visualize, right? Sure, you could do uh, two values of x, but then you'd have kind of a, a 3D version here, and it get very quickly gets hard to visualize. But in the end, we're still doing the same thing, right? We're plugging in values, and we're predicting what the y value would be. Okay. Uh, good. Does this sound familiar at all? Sort of, maybe seen it, maybe done it in Excel, maybe, potentially. Cool. Uh, well, that's good. time series and forecasting is uh, kind of a relative of linear regression, but it's going to be a special case where we have time on the x-axis, right? And so, uh, and that's what I saw when I went to the, uh, the wet presentations last term, there were a lot of time series analyses, right? So we want to talk about that so we have a good understanding uh, but time series and forecasting, I'm going to call it a, a special case of, of linear regression. Oops. Where time is on the x-axis. So then we'd have something like this, All right? So some response y and time, oops. Oh. Clean this up. Time is on the x-axis. So then we might have kind of current values. And then here, this is 
the future in time. What's the most reasonable thing to want to do here? Well, I would probably want to know, okay, how is it going to behave in the future? Now that's hard, right? But we try to do it and there are tools for doing that. And that's what that chapter is about. Chapter eight, I think it's called. And so then here, we're trying to predict future values right, in terms of time, right? Or forecasting, weather forecasting, right? I know it's cold today, it was cold yesterday, it was cold the day before. What's my prediction for tomorrow? It's cold. probably cold, right? Probably, unless you live in Calgary, then you never know. Uh, right, and so, uh, but we can make predictions for future values based off of past values, but gets a little bit tricky. You know? So it's just an extension of just linear regression. Uh, and then our kind of end goal for us would be predictive data mining, which sounds crazy. I guess data mining might sound a little bit, oh, I'm gonna give you the data. So you're gonna just have the data. You don't have to mine for the data, but you have to mine the data for these predictions. And so, uh, oh, and I just thought of a fun video that I'll post the most typical person. And so they've, uh, they've combined all these different characteristics to find what the average person looks like, or uh, at least kind of characteristics, right? Where do they live um, and that kind of thing. Right? And so you could do that on a smaller scale. But I'm not gonna write that down. I won't, probably should. Uh, predictive data. No, cause it makes, I don't think we'll get there. That's why I'm holding off. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, I was going to use this as a reminder to introduce the, the other case studies that they talk about, but I encourage you to read those and just to kind of get an idea of the different ways different fields use analytics, right? But like we established earlier, we've got a pretty good idea of what uh, different fields are using it for. And so here, this is the one that I wanted to, and I don't know why it's still blurry. I stole it all from the same source. So along with kind of data mining comes big data, the term big data, uh, which is very catchy, right? Uh, and so, and I think we're all aware of how much data is being collected, right? And the textbook does an excellent job of kind of highlighting how much data the, all these companies are storing now as opposed to before, right? And so, uh, but what I want to say about big data is that big data, the term is really, uh, and I guess there's no kind of set definition of big data. It's just kind of an understanding. And so big data is uh, any data set that you can't store in a traditional way. So Excel can't handle it, SVSS can't handle it, uh, and that kind of thing. And honestly, Excel kind of clunks out around 2 million observations, which isn't that many. Uh, and so uh, once you're dealing with kind of big, big data, then you'll want to try to find other uh, tools for your analytics, but I'm not concerned about that because that's extremely rare, right? That you would have to deal with that. 
and you have databases and things like that. But um, so big data is just any data, I'll call it a data set, right? And for us, it would be any data set that's too large for something like Excel. Right. Any data set that is too large for Excel to handle, for example. Right, there are lots of different tools that we can use, but we're gonna use Excel and so, um, so big data is just, you've got this huge data set. What can you do? You can grab bite-sized pieces that you can handle, right? You can take a sample and then use statistical inference, apply it to the rest, right? So definitely tools, um, but one of the main things that I'm gonna be harping on is that the tools that we develop, right, we're going to develop them on kind of, I hate to say small data, right, but, you know, regular traditional data sets, right, that aren't big, that's fine. But what we can do is we can apply them to big data later. So the tools, bless you, uh, are the same regardless. The tools uh, are the same, regardless of if we're dealing with big data or small data. There are extra considerations to keep in mind if you have big data, but for us, we're gonna focus on kind of traditional data. We will analyze traditional data. because it's still the most common, right? Unless you're, uh, you're planning to become an actual data scientist through and through, right? You don't need those big data techniques. And it's more about the storage and the retrieval than anything else. Uh, so we're gonna analyze traditional data and uh, I'll just make notes where it applies if there are differences for kind of big data. Okay. Uh, let me see. Any questions so far? A broad overview of all the sections. Uh, they finish the chapter with ethics. And it's become more and more common that if you do a, a data science degree, right, you'd have to do a course on ethics, data ethics, and that kind of thing. And so I'll mention it here, but, and I'll bring it up as it comes up, but a lot of it is just kind of straightforward. Uh, it makes sense that you're not allowed to share someone else's data, right? If you've committed to not sharing it, right? It's just kind of a nice, play nice on the playground stuff, right? Um, but also in terms of ethics from an analyst's point of view, right? Uh, you wanna make sure that you're, where is it? Uh, transparent about the methods used, right? Also assumptions that you've made. And so for me, that's really important, right? I'm assuming that this is the case. And so it's always worthwhile to mention that somewhere in your report, probably not front and center, but you have to include it somewhere, right? And so here, always pay attention to assumptions that you're making. A 
that's something to to just remember in general, right? Uh, you want to uh, kind of think about, okay, well, I'm assuming this and this and this, and uh, and to highlight your assumptions, right? And so uh, I'm going to try my best to have you state your assumptions, right? But we haven't done anything yet, so you're safe for now. And so um, obviously you don't want to misrepresent the data, right? You want to do your best at having uh, data that's representative of the population and that kind of thing. And so that goes into data collection, which we won't be doing, but we will talk about data collection just briefly. Okay. Um, good. Let's see here. Uh, there was something about assumptions that I want, wanted to say. State my assumptions. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, that's okay. What if the results aren't what you were hoping for? or what your client was paying you for. Obviously, ethics dictates that that doesn't matter, right? But uh, it happens all the time, right? Where you, you kind of give yourself a little bit more wiggle room than you should and say, well, I think it's okay because of this and this and this, and, uh, right? And so there are lots of ethical issues that we have to deal with, not just in protecting data, but in presenting information Right, and um, just in general, data is kind of a sticky subject. Um, how do you anticipate collecting data? Any ethics concerns? I actually can't think of any. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm like, I don't, are there any ethics concerns? Yeah, totally. I was thinking more specifically in terms of water, right? And so, uh, I don't know, going into different, I don't know. I don't know enough about the data collection. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. How would I summarize that? Uh, Property yeah, property rights. It's like a meter always needs to buy. But stop checking, so you just like buy it. Which happened to my brother in law. His gas meter is just stuck on the same value for years. He's like, I don't know why people are so upset about paying for gas. It's really cheap. It's like, it's 12 bucks a month. We're like, no, it's not. <laughs> so yeah, good. Uh, and so let's just summarize. Um, just kind of there's ethics in uh, the collection locations and individuals. All right, going back to the age thing, or, uh, you know, you have to have consent and that kind of thing. Uh, but the collection locations, um, right, you have to have permission in general. It's not that interesting, I guess. Ethics to me are pretty straightforward. Right? It's things that we have to kind of learn about and, and understand. But in terms of what's ethical and what's not, you've got it, right? It's in your gut. And so um, let's see here. Kind of an interesting case and something to consider
and I bring this up and I always say that I want to read this book. I haven't read it yet, uh, but Weapons of Math Destruction, read a lot, a lot of other uh, stats books. If you've ever read a, a Malcolm Gladwell book, it's like basically stats for fun. Um, he wrote Outliers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and he's really good. But um, so when we talk about our how we're going to build a model, right, going back to regression, we're going to model things to predict an outcome, right? And so we're going to use explanatory variables, so other factors that help predict the outcome. Okay. And so if we model, if we use uh, different factors, to model an outcome, we need to consider kind of, uh, we call them confounding variables. So things that might be lumped into a variable which isn't explicit, and I've got the example here, but where it's not explicit, but in using that variable uh, such as home location, right, then sure, you're, you're explicitly talking about home location, but what does home location also kind of have an indicator for? It has an indicator for things like income, ethnicity, right, depending on where you live, right, and so, uh, especially if you're building a model for accepting or declining a loan for someone, right, then you want to be really explicit about what you want your model to incorporate and then just be really careful that you're not incorporating uh, variables that have confounding variables. We need to consider, uh, if we use different factors to model an outcome, we need to consider potential confounding variables okay. so here i'll just highlight the location of the home right, is potentially correlated and i use we haven't talked about correlation but uh we use the term correlation just in regular uh everyday speech more or less, right? And it just means that there's a relationship there, right? A relationship between these two variables, right? And so there's a relationship between home location and things like income and ethnicity. And so, of course, income is probably a relevant variable. That's fair enough, right? Well, should I borrow money to this to this applicant or not? Well, how much money do they make, right? That's a fair question to ask, but ethnicity shouldn't be one of those factors, right? And so then what you would wanna do is you would say, okay, instead of considering the home of, or the, the location of the home, I'm going to boil it down and talk about just their income, right? Not the location of the home. On the flip side though, sometimes you can find uh, kind of uh, money-making variables that summarize many variables, right? And so, but then you'd wanna be really careful again, not to have those confounding variables in there. Okay. Any questions about that? broad strokes overview chapter. So in chapter two, we're going to talk about, boom, 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 boom. just introduce chapter two. I'm not gonna start it today, we'll hold off, uh, but I encourage you to read ahead. It's kind of a bigger chapter. Um, 
we start from the very beginning, just kind of types of data. And then uh, I'll save the Excel things for Friday, the Friday blip. Uh, and we'll talk about different graphs that we can make, measures of location, so center, variability, and just kind of lots of stuff in just to introduce in chapter two. And so I'll start that on Wednesday, I guess. Uh, and we'll keep picking away at it. But there's no way we'll get through it in one day. So if you're reading ahead, you can just, I don't know, 2.5 sounds good-ish. Yeah. Um, any questions? No. Then that's it. I got nothing. Good job. I'll stop this.